New accusations tonight that the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency needs to clean up its act. A government report obtained by CBS News correspondent Deborah Potter says the EPA still fails to make many corporate polluters pay for cleaning up some of the nation's worst toxic waste sites. And that leaves you-know-who stuck with the tab. It looks like a junkyard, but Delaware sand and gravel is more than an eyesore. It's a toxic cemetery of industrial waste. Closed down in 1976, it's still contaminated with cancer-causing chemicals. The law says the companies that caused this mess must pay to get rid of it, but that's not happening here. We're going to move forward and, and eliminate the source, and uh, we will uh, pursue the responsible parties at a later date. But a congressional report obtained by CBS News says the Environmental Protection Agency does a woeful job of making polluters foot the bill. At fully a third of the 1,200 sites covered by the 10-year-old Superfund program, no responsible parties have even been identified. And of the $2 billion the government has already spent on cleanups, only 8% has been recovered, leaving some in Congress fuming. The innocent resident, the citizen of a community, is the one who ultimately is being asked to pay the bill for some polluters' misdeeds. Example, Pess's Chemical, a metals recycling plant. The government is paying to decontaminate the site even though 54 companies have been tagged as responsible parties, including Motorola, EverReady Batteries, and the U.S. Air Force. Critics say the EPA almost never gets tough with polluters. They can order the companies uh, what to do in terms of a cleanup. And if the companies uh, refuse to cooperate, they can be hauled into court and sued for triple damages. We're making every effort to uh, meet a number of these criticisms. Some have been valid, there's no question. The key is we're focused on them, and we're making every effort to get past them, and I think progress is being made. But it may not happen fast enough to keep the taxpayers from picking up an even bigger tab. While the Superfund now has $10 billion to cover cleanups, the government's final bill could reach $30 billion, unless polluters are forced to pay more. Deborah Potter, CBS News, Washington. No space shuttle landing today. The crew of Columbia spending an extra day in space because of fog over the California desert landing site. They'll try for a landing early Saturday morning. Columbia is coming home with a belly full and 11-ton package of experiments containing crucial information about how various construction materials react to harsh conditions in space. It was Dean Witter's personal philosophy of success. We have a sacred trust to protect our customers. But its impact was felt on California Street. To maintain conservative policies. On Lincoln Street and Acorn Street. To put the interest of our clients first. Dean Witter put principles before profit, people before portfolios. There are many ways to measure success on Wall Street. We measure success one investor at a time. Dean Witter, a member of the Sears Financial Network. People who want that competitive edge also want the nutrition of 100% whole grain. But of these eating cereals, only Wheaties is made with 100% whole grain. So only Wheaties gives you whole grain nutrition. Better get your whole grain. You better eat your Wheaties. I'm in, I'm in. Do you hear that? Oh, hey, who ate the pretzels? They huh? always eat them all. Okay. Hey, honey, how about the sandwiches, huh? Hey, okay, but I'm out of America Whip. Hi, fool. I'm out. I gotta go. Come on, guys, where are you going? I'm behind. A sandwich just isn't a sandwich without the tangy zip of Miracle Whip or Miracle Whip Light. Not a bad bluff. <laughs> R.J. Reynolds Company said late today it is canceling plans to test market so-called uptown cigarettes in Philadelphia. This decision came the day after U.S. Health Secretary Louis Sullivan joined other critics of the company's plan to market the new brand aimed specifically at African Americans. Sullivan said uptown's message is more disease, more suffering, and more death for a group already bearing more than its share of smoking-related illness and mortality. That's end of a quote. An attorney representing an Irish Republican Army member jailed without charge in the United States was in federal court in New York today. 
CBS News correspondent Harry Smith reports this was just the latest chapter in Joe Doherty's long legal and political battle against deportation. Joe Doherty's lawyer got plenty of moral support as she left the U.S. courthouse in New York today. These folks think her client is a freedom fighter. The U.S. Justice Department thinks he's a terrorist. Mary Pike represents the IRA fugitive who's been in a U.S. prison for almost seven years. He's never been charged with a crime in the United States. In 1980, Doherty was convicted in Northern Ireland of murder for the death of a British officer who was killed while fighting the IRA. But Doherty escaped and fled to the United States, where he lived, until his arrest in 1983 at this New York bar. He's been in prison ever since. The United States Department of Justice has played games with immigration laws, deportation laws, to keep him here in our custody until they can send him where they want to send him. Margaret Thatcher wants Doherty back in Britain, and the U.S. Justice Department is apparently doing everything it can to arrange that. But the U.S. court system has ruled since 1984 that Doherty cannot be extradited or deported. You cannot solve the problem by sending Joe Doherty back. You must deal with the problem. You must go to the cancer, and the cancer is British involvement. It always has been, and it always will be. Before three appeal judges today, Doherty's attorney called the Justice Department's legal maneuverings naked manipulation of the law, citing seven previous victories in lower U.S. courts. The Justice Department lawyer said what's really at stake is fighting terrorism, that the government has the right to decide when an individual like Doherty is a threat to national security. We do not want someone of that ilk in our country. The second interest is that we have our treaty obligations to carry out. What it basically boils down to is politics. It's not the particular actions, you know, but rather, rather the political implications. Doherty's supporters, including more than 100 members of Congress, agree. What's at stake here uh, in the mind of the administration, it appears, as to our uh, friendly relations with, uh, with Margaret Thatcher. If the Justice Department wins this round, the case could end up in the Supreme Court. If not, Joe Doherty could soon apply for political asylum in the United States. Harry Smith, CBS News, New York. Arthur J. Goldberg, former U.S. Supreme Court Justice, cabinet member, and ambassador to the United Nations, died yesterday in his Washington apartment. Arthur Goldberg was 81. His body was discovered this morning by a maid. The cause of death not immediately announced. Goldberg was one of 11 children of Russian immigrants to the United States. He rose to prominence as a labor lawyer after wartime service with the OSS. As labor secretary in the Kennedy cabinet, Goldberg said, I have a philosophy that people expect government to be activist, so I was activist. I settled strikes. The self-described guru known as Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh died today of a heart attack in India. He was 58. Rajneesh ran a commune in Oregon in the 1980s until he was deported for violating U.S. immigration laws. Louisiana authorities say actor Rusty Hamer has died after shooting himself in the head. Hamer played Danny Thomas's son on the old television series Make Room for Daddy. Rusty Hamer was 42. You don't have to go to Harvard to learn beef is nutrient dense. We're talking protein, iron, B12, and zinc. I didn't go to Harvard. Went to Yale instead. Beef. Real food in Yale. Washington. This looks like something my mom would eat. It's kind of uh, quiet, conservative. I don't think I can get into this. I mean, it's just a bunch of flakes. Hmm. It doesn't taste the way it looks. Or like the way it crunches. Maybe it's good because it's simple. <laughs> wait, wait, don't tell me. I'm just like my mother. Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Corn Flakes? Taste them again for the first time. You think my guys are going to be sidelined by a tough sinus cold? Not these Grabowskis. The congestion, the pain, the sinus pressure. As tough as it gets, maximum strength Dristan is tougher. Dristan unblocks congestion here. Sweeps away pressure here and here. Knocks out sinus pain. And it won't make you drowsy. That's important. When you're playing with bears, when you can't call in sick, call on Dristan. It's maximum strength relief. Why do we enjoy Alpine Lace, low cholesterol, and lower in sodium cheeses? Because they're so delicious. And 
We take care of ourselves. Take care of yourself. Delicious Alpine Lace, low cholesterol, and lower in sodium cheeses. Here's a multiple choice question for you. The Lombada is A, a potted fern, B, a dangerous tropical fish, C, a unit measuring electricity. If your answer is any of the above, better watch David Browning's report. Dance fads come and dance fads go, and if Saturday Night Fever somehow passed you by in the 70s, if you missed the twist in the 60s, or were confounded by the karaoke way back when, fear not, there's a new dance craze just for you. If you have no shame, it is called the Lombada, and it's naked enough, and how shall we say it, intimate enough, to make Fred and Ginger blush. Lombada is from Brazil, and it's a combination of samba and salsa and merengue. It's like dirty dancing with a Latin flavor or European flavor to it. Lombada has swept Europe, and the dance group Kaoma is now pushing it at nightclubs around the United States. Now, ladies, be careful of with your back. And though it's not recommended for the inhibited or the infirm, it's packing them in at dance classes. It's tough. 15 minutes of this, your legs are about to fall off. The young, the old, the bad, and the beautiful. It was never like this at Arthur Murray's. The dancers, perfect strangers sometimes. Uh, you two know each other. Not really. No, we do not Dance teacher Kathy McGee has her own theory why the Lombada's hot. It's safe sex what do you mean? of the 90s. How so? It's almost as much fun and it's a lot safer. And if all this is a little too X-rated for your taste, you can still learn the Lombada at home with Kathy Blake's more sedate mail-order Lombada video. This is lots of fun to do, especially if you're good friends with your partner. And if you're still skeptical about the dimensions of this craze, we should point out that rehearsals have begun for the motion picture Lombada, the Forbidden Dance, about a Lombada dancer who helps save the Brazilian rainforest, featuring a cast of dozens. Will this fad last? Maybe. If you get a call saying, Mom, Dad, I've quit law school to become a Lombada dancer, remember, you heard about it here first. David Browning, CBS News, Los Angeles. Well, that's the news from our world tonight. Bob Schieffer will be here tomorrow, followed later by Saturday night with Connie Chung. Connie will have the news Sunday before 60 Minutes. Dan Rather for the CBS Evening News. I'll see you Monday. Good night. This is...